I think Rare has made a load of great decisions, however, this is one mechanic that I always have been against, reviving. While it's great for PvP, I think it's wildly unbalanced for PvP and has had a negative effect on the meta. I want to start off by saying this is no means me hating on Rare, PvP or the Revive mechanic as a whole, although I strongly believe that Revive lowers the skill gap and forces boarding to be a much heavier focus of naval combat. Along with this, smaller crews are further punished by Revive. Solo slooping has always been difficult, but adding chain shots and reviving has skewed the meta heavier towards the larger crew sizes too. Don't get me wrong, Sea of Thieves is not balanced at all when it comes to solo play and Rare has always been clear about that. So, in that case, my points can be applied to smaller crews in general, but mainly to duo sloops. My first major point about reviving is that it incentivizes boarding over any sort of play. The meta was very skewed before, but reviving has made boarding an absolute must even against the most unskilled crews. I'll use this example. Two galleons go at it and start trading broadsides, chains, whatever. Galleon A manages to kill a player on Galleon B, meaning they now have the upper hand, but they only have the upper hand for a total of 5 seconds. That dead crew member has now been revived and his only punishment is not a trip to the ferry, but he's been out of action for a few seconds and now he has to eat some food. Before reviving was added, killing someone with a cannonball has guaranteed the enemy is understaffed for a good minute or so, which can be crucial in naval combat. Don't get me wrong, boarding and defending against repairers was very vital, but you could still kill people in naval combat. As the player can easily be brought back with little consequence, you need to board to ensure your enemies don't get the revive off. So, the battle has progressed, and you're boarding to make sure your rivals don't revive one another. You manage to board and kill two of them, but the third guy gets a lucky blunderbuss and you're dead. He can now revive his two teammates while the fourth member bails, repairs, whatever, and your play again has been negated. Your crew can still be putting holes in, dropping masks, etc, but this has now given them a chance to reset and recover from being outplayed or making a silly decision. You can send another boarder over to keep the pressure on, but again, that leaves your crew short-handed. This is what most ship fights end up devolving into, who can board and who can prevent reviving. I do like the revive system when it comes to PvE, but here's another example and this pertains to spawn camping, particularly on smaller vessels. Say you're a crew of two on a sloop and you're up against a galleon, but they're much less skilled than you. You're outgunned by the fact they have more cannons. They might not hit you and you can land all your shots, but they just have more manpower to repair. The issue is, Rare has given us the tools to kill and eliminate them with firebombs and blunderbombs, though these tools are negated by reviving. You can kill the crew of your cannons, but it doesn't matter as they can easily be revived. Once you've run out of your 5 blunders, you need to swap with your crewmate or get 5 more, then keep the area where the enemy died in your sights to prevent reviving. Once again, they get the revive off and your skillful play has been invalidated. Now you can say, but a shiny ray, you can also revive your sloop partner. This isn't strictly true, as a revive on a sloop is much riskier because there's no one else to repair, repel borders or bail. If your ship is in a bad way, you just have to take the penalty of a death. Again, a sloop is a fantastic ship, probably the best in the game. However, numbers should not be what wins you encounters, skill should. Slightly off topic, but before reviving was added, I would be confident going against any size crew solo. Unlike most players, I played mainly solo in the first year of the game and it really helped me get my skill level up. I'm not saying I'm any good, but I definitely improved solo slooping. And in my opinion, it's the best way to get good at ship combat. Now, a solo player can run circles around a ship, and the enemy crew can't be punished for being bad just because they have more crewmates. I've seen countless players better than me who solo sloop and they still lose to terrible crews just because they can make mistakes and get away with it. Moving on, let's talk about spawn camping and how this can apply to any ship or scenario when an enemy crew is larger or equal to yours. Reviving makes breaking spawn camps even harder and again gives people a crutch. If a good crew can spawn camp you without dying, reviving doesn't come into it, but many times we've been in a situation where we're getting camped and managed to kill one or two players, but as we also die, they get a free pass and the defenders don't. I've been on both sides of this situation too, and it just sucks for everyone involved. It's not fun. To reiterate, the boarding meta and hand-to-hand -hand combat is becoming far too vital in engagements, which is a shame as naval combat is just a better, more polished experience. Hand-to-hand -hand PvP can be mired with clunky hit reg, visual glitches and unbalanced weapons, which takes the fun out of PvP when it's the only way to secure victory, even when there's a large skill gap. Don't get me wrong, an open crew is going to lose to happy feats or blurbs or whoever without them stepping off their ship, but against a crew who knows their arse from their end, can easily keep a ship afloat and revive infinitely. So, should we just get rid of reviving? No, absolutely not. It should be rebalanced though. I think one of the ways this can be improved is shortening the window you can begin a revive and increase the time it takes to revive, as 5 seconds is far too short. Some whole patches take longer than 5 seconds to perform, so getting someone back into the game should be much longer than fixing a hole. 
Another suggestion is that you can only have one revive per X amount of time when getting a pink flame. The flame of fate system exists and tracks people's methods of death, so why not use this to balance reviving? Let's say if you get killed, you can only have one revive until you're sent to the ferry, but only if you're killed by another player. You can say that fire can kill you in PvP, but it doesn't matter too much as the fire is a constant hazard on the ship, which can kill you when you're revived if you're not careful. One revive before going to the ferry will allow players to have a second chance in PvP, but still stop people using it as a crutch. Smaller crews don't get much chance to revive anyway, so they'd be largely unaffected. Finally, you can still get infinite revives in PvE, so world events wouldn't become more grindy as a result of this rebalance, so you can get slapped by old Horatio to your heart's content. And lastly, my final proposition, and probably the best one, is adding a new cursed cannonball that means you can't revive for 30 seconds. Personally, I think this is the best solution, as you have to find them in the world and it encourages you to use it at the right time, like an anchor or ballast ball. Come to think of it, we should really get some more cursed cannibals too, but that's a topic for another video. So, there we have it. Just my outlook on my least favourite mechanic in Sea of Thieves. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, it's time for the weekly Obsidian 6 pack giveaway which includes this fancy eye of reach. All you have to do is subscribe, comment your answer to the weekly question and like the video. The last step is optional but really does help me out. This week's question is, do you think reviving is a good mechanic or does it need a rebalance? Make sure you comment your gamertag too and please include the hash and numbers if it has any of them. The winners will have the 6 pack added to their account automatically and may take 2 weeks for them to be added to the account. Oh, and lastly, here's the winners from last week on the screen. Good luck everyone. Thanks again for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.